Hey guys, my name is Vishwas and in this video, let's go over seven of the most common React mistakes that beginners tend to make. If you're new to React, this video will definitely help you understand certain errors in React and how to solve them. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Kite. Kite is a completely free plugin that integrates into your text editor to provide AI-powered code completions. Because of machine learning, Kite's completions are sorted by relevance rather than being sorted alphabetically. You're going to see that in action in this video. Check out the link in the description to download Kite for free. All right, let's begin with our very first mistake. And that is invoking component names starting with a lowercase letter. To demo that, I have created a simple component called message which renders hello world in the browser. We then export it as default from this file message.js. We import it in app.js and include it in the JSX. If you take a look at the browser though, we don't see the text hello world. This is a common mistake you might commit having worked with JavaScript. In JavaScript, your file names and your function names are usually lowercase as that is the convention. However, in React, if you want to render a React component, its name must start with an uppercase letter during invocation. Now there are a few ways to identify this problem. First, you can see that VS Code itself shows that the variable message is not being used. Second, if you look at the browser console, React tells you that message is unrecognized by the browser and that you might want to start the component name with an uppercase letter. So in app.js, import message with an uppercase M and invoke it with an uppercase M as well. And now you can see the text hello world in the browser. I would also recommend you stick to React conventions and rename your file as well as component to uppercase M. This might seem like a trivial bug, but it is one that we all tend to make when starting out with React. The second mistake we tend to make is importing named exports as default exports. In the components folder, I have a file called named export.js. Within the file, I have a simple component called named export. But what is different here compared to the message component is that it is a named export and not a default export. However, when trying to import this component in app.js, we tend to include it without the curly braces. So import named export from components slash named export and then invoke the component. If you take a look at the browser, you can see that we have an error and React tells us that the named export file does not contain a default export. To solve this, wrap your import with curly braces and your app should work as expected. Again, a common error we tend to make when we haven't nailed down the fundamentals of default and named exports. The third mistake we as beginners tend to make is when using the setter function from the use state hook. In the components folder, I have a file called counter.js. This is a pretty simple counter component where we have a count state variable starting at zero and a button to increment the count value. To increment the count value, we add the onClick handler and we invoke set count passing in count plus one. If we include the component in app.js and take a look at the browser, you can see that we have an error. Too many re-renders. React limits the number of renders to prevent an infinite loop. This is a result of us calling the setter function 
instead of passing a reference to that function in the onclick handler. Currently, on initial render, set count is invoked. The count value is incremented to 1. If the count value increments, the component needs to re-render. This will again cause set count to be invoked and the value is now 2. This again causes a re-render and the same goes on forever which is why React throws an error to prevent the infinite loop. To correct this, pass an arrow function into the onclick handler. Now, the component works as expected. This is a mistake I often used to make when starting out with the use state hook. It's also a mistake I've seen a lot of junior developers commit as well, so I thought it is a good inclusion for this video. Let's now move on to the fourth mistake, which also has to do with the use state hook, and that is mutating objects or arrays. In the components folder, I have another file called name.js. Here we have a state variable called name whose default value is an object with two properties, first name and last name. In the JSX, we display the full name and we also have a button to change the name from Clark Kent to Bruce Wayne. The onclick handler is the change name function. Within the change name function, on the name state variable, we update first name to Bruce and last name to Wayne and pass that in to the setter function. If we include it in app.js and head to the browser, click on the button, you can see that the name does not change. This is because the use state setter function expects new object reference and not the same object that is mutated. If we instead pass in a new object to set state with the same properties, and click on the button, the name changes as expected. As a beginner, when we maintain object as state, it is a mistake we all do and wonder why the UI doesn't reflect the changed value. This same case also holds good for arrays. When using array values as state variables, do not mutate the array by using dot .push or dot .pop methods. Instead, make a copy of the array, perform the desired operation, and then pass that copy into the useStateSetter function. This might seem like a mistake that we wouldn't usually do, but I wanted to highlight this as React does not throw any error when you pass in the same mutated object. So as a beginner, it is difficult to identify what exactly is wrong with the code. All right, let's now take a look at mistake number five. And this also is related to use state. As beginners, we either don't know or easily forget that the use state setter function is asynchronous. This can lead to mistakes in the code we write. Let me show that to you with an example. In the components folder, I have a file called asyncsetState.js. Within the component, I have a state variable called count initialized to zero. In the JSX, I have a button that shows the count value. And on click of this button, what I want to do is call an API with the updated count value. The click handler is send count value to API. And in the function definition, we keep things pretty simple. First, we increment the count value. After incrementing, I have a log statement that says sending count value to API followed by the count value. You can assume that we are calling an API passing in the count value. If I include the component in app.js and head to the browser, and click on the button, you can see that the count value is updated on the button. However, if you take a look at the console, you can see that we are sending a count value of zero to the API. 
Our intention was to send the updated count value of 1, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. As beginners, we tend to think that set count will update the count value, and in the very next line, we would have that updated value. But set count is async, and hence the output is not what we expect it to be. To get the desired behavior, we need to use the use effect hook. So import it at the top and then call the hook. The dependency array is going to contain the variable count and we simply use the same log statement from the function. I'm also going to remove calling the API from the onclick handler. If you now head to the browser and click on the button, we can see that the count value updated to one. And we are calling the API with a value of one. That is the updated value. On page load, the API would be called with a count value of zero, but you can also make a check to ensure the API isn't called if count equals zero in the effect hook. So keep in mind, the use state setter function is asynchronous and that will help you not make mistakes like this. Let's now move on to mistake number six, which is to do with rendering a list of elements. As beginners, when we try to render a list of items, we tend to use the index as value for the key prop. This might be due to unavailability of an ID on the list item or simply because we feel that index serves the purpose. But using index as key can lead to bugs, which I want to quickly demo with an example. Here I have a code pen demo. In the UI, we have four columns to render a list of data. Index column, which represents the item index. ID column, which represents the item ID. The value of the item and the time it was created. At the top, we have four buttons. Add an item to the start of the list, add an item to the end of the list, and two buttons to sort by earliest and latest. Also, what I want you to focus on is this to-do component where we use index as key prop. Let me enter the first item value as one. I'm going to add two more items to the end of the list and set the value as two and three. Two and three. Remember, we are using index as the value for the key prop. Now, I want you to closely observe what happens when I click on add new item to the start of the list. Ideally, it would create a row at the top with index equals zero, ID equals four, and the item value should be empty and created will be the current time. If I click on the button, the behavior is definitely not what we expected. A row indeed was inserted at the top with ID equals four and index zero, but instead of being an empty value, it already has a value of one. And the fourth item at the end of the list with an ID of three, which previously had a value of three, is now empty. This is a bug that is caused by using index as a key. This also messes up your sorting functionality. If I refresh and add three items and click on sort by latest, the date is in the descending order but the values still remain one, two, and three instead of three, two, one. If you want to correct this bug, all you have to do is use a unique ID as the key prop and not the index. I've seen this mistake made by quite a few people and then pull their hair out. It's also difficult to understand why this is happening as React doesn't throw an error. Hopefully, if you are a beginner, you now know how to solve this mistake when you see it in code. All right, now for our seventh and final mistake. 
Now, this is something I wouldn't necessarily consider as a complete beginner mistake, but it is something beginners tend to do when trying to optimize components re-rendering. Let me explain. In the components folder, I have a file called parentchild.js. Within the file, we have two components, parent component and a child component. In the parent component, we have a state variable called count and a button to increment that count value. We also have an object that is defined inside the parent component called name with name.firstName set to Bruce and name.lastName set to Wayne. We pass this object as a prop to the child component. In the child component, we destructure name from props and render the first name and the last name. We also have log statements both in parent and child components that indicate if the parent and child components rendered. If we now include the parent component in app.js, and take a look at the browser, we have the button and the JSX from the child. We also have the log statements corresponding to the render, parent render and child render. Now, if I click on the button, it increments the count value. If we take a look at the console though, you can see that the child component renders whenever count value changes. But if we take a look at the code, count has nothing to do with the child component. So we feel there is a chance for us to optimize the child rendering behavior. We can use React Memo to ensure that the child component re-renders only when its props changes. In this case, only when the name changes and not when the count state variable changes in the parent component. So const memoized child is equal to react.memo. We pass in the child component and then include memoized child as the child component in parent component. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, click on the button and you can see that the child component still re-renders. This is because of the object defined in the parent component. As beginners, when we don't completely understand all parts that affect the rendering of a component, we assume that React Memo will optimize the child re-render. If you don't add the log statements, you probably assume that your code is optimized. To fix this mistake, you need to memoize the person object. So import, use memo, and then const memoized person is equal to use memo, pass in an arrow function, which returns the name object. And the dependency array is an empty array. Now, pass in the memoized person object as the name prop to the memoized child component. If we take a look at the browser, click on the count variable and the child rendering is optimized. Now, if you have a function instead of an object, you would need to use the use callback hook. If you're interested in understanding more about incorrect optimizations and optimizations in general, you can check out my React render series in the channel. With that, we come to the end of this video. If you are a beginner to React, I hope you now know some of the common mistakes and how to fix them. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.